This week on Dance of Joy, we get nostalgic about melons, styrofoam, and green buses. All that and more as we watch season four, episode two of our favorite 80s hit sitcom, Perfect Strangers. Listener, and welcome to Dance of Joy, a Perfect Strangers rewatch podcast. My name is Imran. Joining me, my sister, Sophia. How are you, Sophia? Stop. Wait, we just started. My no. name is Sophia. I'm here to <laughs> get this podcast recorded, and we are going to record this podcast now. Listen, I don't, you can't tell me what to do. I'll record this podcast only because I choose to. Record this episode <laughs> of this podcast. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yes. Look, everything will become clear soon as we dive into a new episode of Perfect Strangers Season 4, which again, let's reiterate, now streaming for free with an Amazon account on IMDb TV. It's amazing. You only have to endure one little commercial break. It's back out in the world for everyone to enjoy. So, yay. yay. This episode, we are at season four, episode two, titled Assertive Training. That's right. Is it ass- Assertive Training? Yes. It's a very straightforward title. If you title. were to look in the TV guide to find out what this episode was about, you would have read after completing an assertiveness training course. Larry hopes to convince Balky that the meek do not inherit the earth, but his plan to help Balky get the raise he deserves backfires. Because of course it does. Shouldn't the title be assert? Is it assertiveness training or assertive training? Is it both? You're the grammar person. It should be assertiveness training, but if the training itself was assertive, then maybe oh, they're talking the about... Oh, training is assertive. Okay, that... Training being <laughs> that, assertive. That also, it I can guess, work either way. It could work both ways. One less syllable is... Uh, <laughs> good. Uh, this episode, we've got our favorites, uh, Bronson Pinchot, Mark Lynn Baker, Melanie Wilson, Rebecca Arthur as our... As our two couples, and then we've got for guests, we have Joe Marie Payne France as Harriet Winslow, our beloved Mr. Gorpley, played by Sam Anderson, and we have a repeat guest uh, actor, and we have a repeat guest actor, a guy named Laurie Goldman, who plays um, an extra character in this episode, and we last saw him as the used car salesman in season three. Yes, and now he's back as a completely different person. Nobody remembers. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> this episode originally aired October 21st, 1988. Okay, let's get into it. Act one actually starts with a quick external shot outside of the Chronicle and something that uh, stood out to me, I, I guess we've seen this before, but it always stands out to me, is that there's a CTA bus, a Chicago Transit Authority public bus that drives by in this external shot. And it's one of the old green CTA buses yeah, yeah. from the 80s. And that's always just nice to see. It's a it's, nice memory. Yeah, you always remember those. Now they're all like white and blue and red yeah. and gray and boxy. But then you had the round. The green yeah. ones are nostalgic. Those are great. As Larry enters the basement of the Chicago Chronicle, where everybody works from the parking garage, of course, and he is upset. Why is he upset? He told he tells Harriet uh, somebody is parked in his spot. He explains it took him a year to get his own parking space. And now somebody is in it. Somebody who owns a black Porsche with red pinstriping. Harriet, of course, Knows everything. And she knows whose car this is. She goes, oh, yeah, that's Doug Perkins' new car. And Larry's like, I'm going to have to talk to him. And she goes, well, now's your chance because Harry comes. You're in luck. Uh, And uh, Doug comes out of the archives. And uh, Larry meekly steps up to him uh, and tries to get to the bottom of this. (laughs) And Doug, uh, who is played by that Lori Goldman that we just mentioned. Cuts Larry off and he says, stop right there. I'm in your space, right? And he sort of takes control of this conversation. And Larry's like, yeah. And he starts to talk and Doug cuts him off again. And he sort of like in this suave, like wordsmithing ways, like talks over him. And he's like, I know what you're thinking, but I can explain. 
And he tells him that he has a new car and Larry's space is right next to the wall. So there's less chance of dings. Uh, and then he keeps going. He tells him that he indeed, in fact, has Larry's best interests at heart. And he offers him his parking spot in exchange. Whoa. So Doug will park in Larry's uh, and Larry can park in his. Seems fair. And, La- and he's like so suave and smooth and quick with the words that Larry doesn't have a moment to think about it. And he's like, well, OK, that sounds fair. And Doug's like, great. Got to run. Bye. And he books it up the stairs. And when he's at the top of the stairs, it finally occurs to Larry. He's like, wait, where is your space? Uh, and then we find out that Doug doesn't have a space, no. a parking space. Oh, my God. But when he gets one, it's all it's all Larry. Wait, wait but he's how does he afford a Porsche also? What does Doug do? That's a pricey car, but he doesn't have a spot. He's been saving up. That's true. So, yeah, Larry <laughs> just gets shafted out of a parking space. Uh, and he turns around and, li- and Harriet is just giving him this look, the best look, like, really, Larry? And Larry's like, uh, it's a Porsche, after all. And then she goes, well, you're lucky you're not parking it for him. Yeah. She walks away. So good. That's a great Basically line. implying that Larry's a sucker. And yeah, he just caved him. like uh, a cave. I don't know. What things came. And then we have a Balky entrance. And just as in the last episode, uh, which was episode one of this season, we get a fantastic musical and music song and dance entrance from Balky. And this time it is La Bamba, yes. which was quite popular in the 80s. Richie Valens. Song La Bamba. Right. Richie Valens, I think, saying. Uh... Oh, and then what? It, it came back around in the 80s. Because of the movie. Right. Because the La Bamba movie. Yeah. With Lou Diamond Phillips, that's right, playing Richie Valens, but it's a great song. So Belky shows up at the top of the stairs with the classic <laughs> uh, big entrance, and he's you know shaking his hips and he dances his way down the stairs, singing all the Spanish, you know, perfectly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and he gets to the he gets to the bottom and he goes, "It's a La Bamba kind of day," <laughs> it's a La Bamba and he's in this kind of great day. he's in a great mood. <laughs> And he's wearing a great shirt. That's right. It's like a like a linen flowy Miposian shirt with with some very nice embroidery. Tan shirt with some lovely embroidery on in the front. Yes. And he's in a very good mood. And why is he in a very good mood and singing La Bamba? Because Gorbley, yeah, he says, Mr. Gorbley, tell me I'm going to find something extra in my pay envelope today. <laughs> And Larry's like, last time he said that, uh, it was a laundry ticket stapled to your check. It was his laundry ticket. Oh. And then just then, Gorpley comes out with a Bartagamus. Here's He goes, here's your paycheck. Take it before I spend it on gum. Oh, he's so mean. So mean. Uh, so Balky grabs the paycheck quickly, looks inside, and he's a little surprised. And uh, there's no there's no something. Extra. No, he goes, uh, Mr. Gorpley, I just looked at my check and I cannot help but notice that the amount is the same last week. And did it's somebody so- forget something? <laughs> <laughs> Gorpley goes, let me see that. And he goes, oh, I did forget something. Thanks for reminding me. And then I love this subtle jab back. He <laughs> goes, oh, just doing your job. Are you? Uh, so he jabs him. But then Gorpley's. The thing that Gorbley forgot was to tell Balky that he's not getting her. Oh, right. no. And Balky is crushed, and Larry's surprised. And Balky asks him straight out, why not? And Gorbley says, nothing personal, Bartokamus. And then he's like, wait, just kidding. It is personal. You're not getting a raise because you're a foreigner. You dress funny, and I didn't feel like wow. it. Wow. And he walks wow. away. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Gorpley. Jeez, you can't. Gorpley okay, should you have can't. been fired right things. there. You cannot you say, say things those like that. things. That is, you could, uh, Balky could go right to human resources and file a lawsuit. I mean, come on. Yes, he would have been canceled. He would have never worked at the Chronicle I again. guess workplaces in the late 80s, though, this was, uh, this was a thing that happened. Uh, you're a foreigner. You're a foreigner. Dress you're funny, funny. And I, don't I feel didn't. Like Feel like and Balky's it. like, oh, well, as long as you have a good reason. And oh, Gorbley leaves, and both of them are just left shock and hurt uh, as we transition so to the next so scene. That is sad. That is what a br- jerk. Brutal. Brutal, Gorbley. Jeez. But then w- transitions back to the apartment. The cousins are entering, and they got bags of 
uh, white takeout food. And yeah, this this stuck out to me because they don't usually have takeout food on this show. And I was well, they have Chinese. They have sometimes. Chinese. And I was trying to read the. It's it's something like Bugs Burgers or Buggy's yeah, Burger. I couldn't. It's like a burger. Place, it's a yeah. burger joint, and I couldn't have. Uh, I couldn't figure it out. But they come in and they're still talking about Doug Perkins and the stuff that just happened to them. Yeah. Larry's just like, ah, you know what I should have told that Perkins? I should have told him to take a powder with his Porsche. What does the, that even mean? He's take a powder was like an old saying of like, get lost. Oh. To say as a really, this is a really old saying. Why don't you take a powder, kid? You ever heard that? In really? Like old, I never heard that. Old timey no. movies. It's an old timey saying. And Balky tries to reassure Larry. He's like, well, at least now everyone will think that you own a Porsche. I mean, look, there's always a silver lining to these things that Balky seems to find. That's kind but of But Larry's funny. not having it. Larry's <laughs> like, you're just you're just as weak as I am. You let Gorpley take your raise away. And he's like, and the bottom line, he's like, people walk all over us. And then there's another example. He pulls out <laughs> one of so the funny. like styrofoam takeout containers. Like, look at this. He ordered a cheeseburger and he got a. And he's like, I ordered a cheeseburger. And I get a what? A, what is this? And <laughs> Balky looks inside and he goes, I believe this is a filet o fish. Filet o fish, <laughs> which is a very McDonald's. Uh, I think yeah, McDonald's it wasn't had McDonald's, patented. but that was yeah. McDonald's. Also, remember when food came in styrofoam packages? That also stuck Still out to does me. Nowhere. Nobody uses styrofoam. You would be uh, you have very to go irresponsible to, like to use styrofoam. Middle America. Really? I, oh, uh, yeah. Everywhere it's paper wrap. Like, I remember. And like, what a bad idea that is looking back to yeah. make these things that do not uh, biodegrade Great, and it yeah. will stay around forever. I was like, oh, my God, styrofoam burger package. I forgot we were that. Um, I think they are still around very limited, but I think there are still some places still use them. We got some more great lines here as Larry goes. I never get what I order. And you know why I never get what I order? And Ducky goes, because you don't enunciate. <laughs> <laughs> and Valerie he goes, no, no, because waitresses intimidate me. And this one was only 14. Oh, my goodness. A <laughs> 14-year-old teenager makes them. He's like, how about, I, uh, I'll just take it. Uh, also, could 14-year-olds work in No, 1988? I believe that's also against some kind of child labor law yeah. today. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't, right. unless, yeah. So then Balky's like, let's just eat our fish. And he says, fish is brain food, or is it brain is fish food? <laughs> ah, <laughs> great Balkyism. I just picture like him feeding brains to little pet goldfish. Weird. And Larry is still like is still peeved and he can't believe what he's hearing from Balky. He says, How can you be so nice? And Balky says that on Meepos, they have a saying, you can never be too nice or too thin. All right, it's fair. <laughs> That's fair. That's a pretty, that, that would work here uh, as well. Yes. Still applies. And then Larry goes, well, this is at Meepos. And I thought he was going to go, in America, he doesn't do in yeah. America, but he goes, here, nice guys finish last. This is uh, the first of a couple of things these guys say that I can relate to. Nice guys finish last. Aww. Definitely, I get that, right? So I totally am vibing with Larry as he starts to Do leave. you also get filet o fish when you order a Lay cheeseburger? O fish. No, I get uh, something completely different. This is ice cream. <laughs> I didn't even say ice cream. Oh. Uh, and here comes the next example yes. of exactly what he's talking about, right? When he says that uh, there's knock on the door, he Larry goes to answer it, and it's Jennifer, his girlfriend. <laughs> and Alleged um, girlfriend, yes. And she says, look, I can't make our date tonight because an old high school friend is in town. I hope it's OK. And Larry's just like, no problem. And she says, I knew you'd understand. Bye. And she leaves. <laughs> <laughs> That's a last minute cancellation. That's like day of. Also, you notice she doesn't say what uh, gender this old right, high school right. friend. Was it a yeah. dude? Was it a girl? Super sketch. Uh, Super sketch, Jennifer. Although it's okay, you can. Uh, yeah, you can... but she doesn't like. She just leaves <laughs> that part out. But as soon as he goes, no problem, and she goes bye, and he closes the door, and he goes, now why did I say it was no problem? It's a big it's problem. It's a big problem. I have tickets to the ballet. Oh my god, he just wasted two. Like those are expensive tickets. Yeah, and tickets. Jennifer, like, come on, what a jerk. Presumably she knew this, he yeah. had was tickets it a to the ballet, and then going? she was gonna, and then she cancels at the last minute. Like so rude. Has some random high school friend that yeah, may, may like, not be a dude that? is there. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Uh, so then they both go to the couch, and this is a pretty good uh, physical comedy where they, they plop down on the couch and pop their feet up on the coffee table at the same time. 
And you notice they have super squeaky shoes. Like they, <laughs> they have dubbed in sounds like that was clearly put in post. Sounds yeah. of the shoes squeaking That's as he moves random, his feet. But funny. It's so funny. <laughs> and then we get a Balkyism. He goes, well, cousin, I think what we ought to do is just eat your fish and consider the whole thing just water under the Baryshnikov. And he does. And he laughs at his own his leg, joke. Laughs at his own joke. <laughs> but Larry's not in a laughing mood. Uh, he's like really feeling this. He's like, everybody walks all over us. This is not a laughing matter. And he says, uh, this is this is great sort of like physical choreography. Too. Yeah, he says, let's face it. Yeah. We have trouble being assertive. And then he he has as he's saying that he has the remote in his hand turning on the TV. He says, let's face it. We have trouble being assertive. He clicks on the TV. And the first thing we hear from the screen is, do you have trouble being assertive? <laughs> they look it's at an each announcer other. voice from They're the like, TV and they what? look at each other. <laughs> And he, the announcer goes on, do you have trouble getting what you order in restaurants? Oh, my God. And, they both, and they're like, yeah. oh, my God. This is very. <laughs> I love this next two exchanges. And he yeah. says, does your girlfriend break dates with you at the last minute? And Larry's <laughs> Larry's like in shock. Balky starts laughing at him. And then the announcer says, when you ask for a raise, does your boss laugh in your face? Now, then Balky turns shocked. He stops laughing. <laughs> and Larry's face is great. He's just like smug, smirking, looking yeah. him up and down. Like, see? Yeah. How does it feel? <laughs> uh, and then the guy goes, do people steamroll over you like you don't even exist? And then they both are paying attention and they lean forward. And when the announcer goes, well, stop. And they both jump a little bit. They jump back. Yeah, they both like funny. flinch. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, if you're tired of being pushed around, take the stop seminar this weekend. Take charge of your life. And there's a phone number. He says, for more information, call this. And do, it do it today. Do it today. It's so funny. So first of all, this was a very interesting scene to watch now in 2022, because yeah. this is exactly what happens now, because all our devices well, are. Yeah listening to us and it's like you and I can have a conversation on this podcast and the next thing I know I'll get an ad for something we talked about yeah I can say something really like frightening, I'm, but... you know I'm shopping for a, a hedge trimmer and now the next right, time I go, open up Facebook go. yeah there's gonna be an ad for a hedge trimmer right. uh, on my phone it's weird uh, and it's totally it's totally the devices listening to us I believe or like all the algorithm stuff but Back in 1988, we didn't have that, so this was a little bit more funny and uh, super shocking convenient yes. to watch this then. But now, watching it now, you're <laughs> like, "Oh, that makes total sense." <laughs> and, Bel- we get, and then we get uh, Belky goes, "Wow, wow!" He's like, "Talk about truth in advertising," which is like what we're talking about. Uh, Larry goes, "Belky, if I'd taken a seminar like that a long time ago, I'd be in my own parking space, and you'd have your raise." Uh, and then Balky goes, all right, cousin. And, and they, they're sitting on the couch. And now we learned some more things about Meepos. We learned a lot. There's a lot of Meepos sayings in this episode. A lot of Meepos now, uh, education. This, <laughs> this is very interesting and hilarious. Balky goes, there's two things we got to know about a Meepian right up front. Number one, we all enjoy a good pomegranate. <laughs> he goes, that one don't apply here. But the next one does. He says, we don't demand things like raises. We believe that if we sow the seeds of hard work, water them with a cheerful attitude, then a tree of blessing will take root and grow. And then we will reap the fruit of our labors, which in most cases is the aforementioned pomegranate. (laughs) Now, here's something. This is another thing that I relate with Balky about also. About like... Not asking for raises. If you do hard work and do good work, someone um, should take notice and reward you. Turns out real life doesn't really work like real that. Real life is not that way. It doesn't really work like that. Especially for women. Oh, God. And especially yeah, for I people think, of color. Yeah, All yeah, the coaching yeah. I've received is like, you have to ask for it. Like, because how will they know? And, and you will get things if you ask. But women mm. and, uh, pe- you know, women tend to not ask and men tend to be more forward about you that. You shouldn't have to ask if you're doing a good job and you're there. I don't know. Yeah. No, you have to document all the good things you're doing. People, people are know. not appreciative. No, of stuff. no you have to write nice. down. Here's all the stuff I did in the last six months, and that's why I deserve a raise. Anyways, Larry gets up after this, uh, this all these uh, advice from Balky, and he goes, "Terrific! This is from the country that gave us the Mediterranean fruit fly." Which I, I don't know. That's kind of funny. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And then Balky's, Balky's like, goes, "Like you're welcome." Oh, he's embarrassed. <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, welcome." But there he goes. I love this. He goes, I'm going to take that seminar. He marches over to the phone, dials the number. He goes, hello, I want to sign up for the stop seminar and take charge of my life. And then he waits a beat. And he goes, yes, I'll hold. 
<laughs> that's so a perfect funny. joke right there. So, I knew he was going to say that. I knew too. that was coming too, but, but that's a perfect was good. joke. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then we cut to the next scene, and Balky's home. He's met, he's in the kitchen, working in the kitchen, and Larry walks in, slams the door behind him, and he like. <laughs> Takes this like pose, this confident pose with like his hands on his hips. chest, all and full of confidence. Yeah, yeah. His che- yeah, and he's wearing this black jacket. He's also wearing like a shirt and tie. I feel like Larry is like a twenty-five-year-old who wears a shirt and tie everywhere. You have to wear a, a shirt. And, you have to wear a shirt and tie. Like a <laughs> uh, and he, so he like puffs up his chest. He slams the door, walks in, comes. He goes, Balky. I'm home <laughs> in a very deep, <laughs> confident voice. It reminds me of the voice he used uh, on the commercial when they were shooting yeah, the commercial. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Balky asks Balky. him how the stop seminar was, and Larry says it was good. It was very instructive. And then he turns all the way around, so the, <laughs> his back is facing the camera and um, as he's taking off his jacket, and we see that the jacket has a huge stop logo from the stop seminar on the back so that he got some swag. Oh, you got a free jacket. Too. That's nice. Yeah, that's like good swag. That's a nice jacket. And then he hangs up the jacket. He goes over to where Balky is on the counter and he's like, he says, Balky, look at me. What do you see? And Balky gets excited. He's like, I love this game, but you make it too easy. I have to cover my eyes first. Larry just like rolls over that. He's like, uncover your eyes. I'll tell you what you see. You see a man who ordered a cheeseburger for lunch and you know what I got? And Balky goes, a BLT? A BLT? <laughs> and then Larry says. Larry says, well, at first. But, <laughs> but I sent it back and got a cheeseburger. Oh. And he's so proud of himself. And Balky says, well, isn't that nice? He's like, you have to tell me over dinner. And he starts to set the table. And Balky, uh, Larry says, Stop. <laughs> he holds up his right Frightens hand. Frightens Balky a little bit. And Balky frightens. He's like, okay. He goes, okay. And he tells him what he learned today. He says, when someone tries to make you do something, but you don't want to do, you just tell them stop. <laughs> and he says, he's not hungry. And Balky goes, but cousin, why you didn't tell me in the first place? Like, and Larry goes, stop. Are you telling me what to tell you? And then Balky goes, uh, I'm not sure what I'm telling you to tell me, but if you tell me what it is you want me to stop telling you, I'll stop telling it to you. <laughs> All <laughs> exasperated and confused. And Larry goes, Balky, it's okay. I'm just trying out the new Larry Appleton. And he goes, a man who's headed up to here with having it up to here as he holds his hand right at his chin. And then there's a knock at the door again. And Larry says, I'll get it, but only because I choose to. <laughs> And he gets the he opens the door. It's Jennifer again, and she's trying to she she starts talking about their date on Monday night. Uh, presumably, she's in the trying future, to blow him off again. Now she's trying to blow him off again. Really, she says Jennifer? she can't make it, and she starts to explain. My supervisor called, etc. And Larry interrupts her, and he holds his hand <laughs> in her face, <laughs> and he goes, "Stop!" stop. <laughs> oh boy! And Jennifer's oh. like, "What?" <laughs> And Larry tells her very assertively, Jennifer, I don't want to hear about it. I asked you out. You said yes. So get on the horn to your supervisor. Tell him you're not going anywhere except out with me. Do it now. Oh, my God. The whole audience is like, what? They all gasp. You can hear them. Uh, And Jennifer is just in shock, right? And she goes, well, okay. And she plays it off so great because you're not sure if she's impressed or, or offended. If she's like, who does this guy yes. think he See, like, is? It could go either way. Have you lost your mind? <laughs> <laughs> and so she leaves, and Balky goes, Balky, you are looking at a lean, mean, assertive machine. And Balky's not so sure, as we can tell by the look on his face as we end the first half of the show. Uh, listener, join this our conversation here. If you watch this episode, and you have some thoughts, which we have listeners that do. They left it on our Facebook group. I post a thread for every episode we're recording ahead of time. So you can leave your thoughts and comments and we will share them on the show at the end of the recap. Dance of Joy Facebook group. It's in the show notes. Join it today. It's a great and fun and welcoming place to discuss the little details of this show. Which there are many every episode. And we will talk about them uh, a little bit later. So now we're getting into act two um, and we're back to where we left off Balky and Larry in the living room and Balky is a little bit in shock at what he just witnessed. (laughs) He's like, uh, isn't Jennifer going to be mad at you? And 
Larry says, uh, tells him, no, they, that's what they teach. That's what they taught him at stop training. Oh, this and is this some is great many stuff here. Larry. Splitting. Yeah. Some great Larry splitting here. He says, people, especially <laughs> women <laughs> like it when you talk to them like that. <laughs> oh boy. They do. Balky asks. Uh, <laughs> and Balky's like, what? And he's like, and then Larry continues. Well, not at first, he says, but pretty soon they learn that you're doing them a favor. <laughs> And then Balky's like, you think you're doing her a favor by talking down to her like you talk down to me? Balky's already on top of this. And Larry says, at stop, they learned that bending people to your will is the most unselfish <laughs> thing you can do. The delivery on this line is fantastic. He goes, you see, Balky, at Balky. stop, we learned that bending people to your will is the most unselfish thing you can yeah, do. Yeah. Like, it's so good the way he does it. You're like, what? Uh, and then Bucky's like, cousin, I believe in being nice to others. And Larry's like, of course, me too. I do. But before you could be nice to others, you have to be nice to yourself. Now, this is a valid point here. Like, you got to take yeah. care of yourself first. Yeah. Like, now we all, especially nowadays, after coming out of One whatever, of it's all about self. Wisdom, yeah, it's right. all about, like, take care of your mental health first. Uh, so they, uh, Larry leads Balky over to the couch and they sit down and he goes, Balky, how do you feel when you see other people get what they want? And says, I, Balky goes, I feel happy. And Larry goes, right. And other people will be happy when they see you get what you want. And Balky's like, really? And Larry goes, yes. So if you want other people to be happy, you have to take what you want, even if it doesn't make them happy while you're taking it. And then Balky just does this big head roll back and forth. He goes, yeah, that's like... let me get this straight. He goes, I could make others happy by taking what I want, even if it makes them unhappy while I'm taking it, because they don't realize how happy they're going to be after I've gotten it. And Larry's like, oh, you're good. <laughs> he goes, <laughs> and he tells him he's a stop natural. And Balky's like, oh, no, stop. Come on. Not really. Then Larry's like, no, you are natural, and I am going to teach you how to get your raise. Uh-oh. Okay, so this whole time, they're sitting at the at the table, at the, on the sofa, right? And, and the coffee table yeah. in front of them is a large fruit bowl, as you fruit. would have. But there are yeah. some interesting items in this fruit bowl that, uh, you know, had to be there for this next joke that normally wouldn't be in a fruit bowl, I think. Yeah. Like, so like, you see bananas. Melon. <laughs> you see grapes, sure. And then there's just you a see- whole... Cantaloupe sitting there, like a uh, big melon. Like, and so Larry <laughs> picks up the melon with both hands in front of him. He's like, Balky, this is your raise. And then Balky says a line that has always stayed in my head yeah, to too. this day. When when I heard it just rewatching now, I was like, I know this line. It's <laughs> always been in my head. Yeah. Every time I go to the supermarket, yes. I think this line. He says, Cousin, this. Is a cantaloupe. Cantaloupe <laughs> is so good. Cantaloupe. I, that, I, just that delivery too. is like one of those this, perfect strangers lines yep. that just sticks in your head. Absolutely. I remember this for line. For like forever. four decades. Yeah. Yeah. This is a cantaloupe. This is a cantaloupe. We just go to the, the produce store and pick up the cantaloupe. I'd be like, this, Cousin, this is, a is a cantaloupe. Just to like random people and they would think I'm crazy. <laughs> so it's fun to do. You do. Uh, try it. Do it <laughs> And then Balky goes, now cantaloupes are nice, but I was hoping for money. <laughs> <laughs> and he explains that the cantaloupe represents the rays and he puts um he gets up and uh they walk to the front door. He's like, Balky, you stand here at the front door, and then he crosses the apartment to put the cantaloupe on the kitchen counter. And then there's like for a brief second, there's like a really strange camera angle. Did you notice that? Uh the kind of like the Yeah, it cuts to this weird angle because Larry had crossed over to, and Balky's by the door, and then it cuts to this angle where it's like from the inside of the kitchen. Oh, so you could see both looking, of them. Yeah. yeah, but it's but it stood out to me because it's not a typical angle you, that we right, see. Right, but you needed that because Larry in the yeah. foreground, and it's just for a brief yeah. moment. Um, well, it's anyway, to get he, this next joke where yeah. you know he's like, all you have to go do is to get your raise is to walk over here and take it. And Balky starts to walk, and Larry hasn't even turned his back. He goes, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> like, that's why they had to do that shot for that joke. Yeah. And he walks back and puts Balky back to the front door again. And he goes, all right now, Balky, concentrate. Commit to your goal. Don't let any obstacles come between you and your raise. Are you ready to get your raise? And Balky closes his eyes, and he's like, yes. And then Larry goes, go. 
And Balky does a funny sort of exaggerated walk. Like a stiff-legged, like Frankenstein time, walk. Almost. Yeah. Like when he was delivering the mail yes. in the, in yes. the ad. Yes, your, your mail. It was an up little. Ah. <laughs> Another line that sticks it's, with it's you a for, for four decades. Yes. <laughs> um, so he starts to walk, and Larry tries to throw him off uh, in the process as he's walking across the room. He's like, is that a spider on your neck? And uh, Balky just like, Scrunches up his shoulder and keeps walking. <laughs> and then he's like, Larry's like, don't step on Dimitri. And he points to the floor and Balky just steps over. We don't see it, but yeah. he takes a step over, presumably Dimitri. Why is Dimitri on the floor? Uh, I don't know. Um, and then he's almost right. He's almost about to grab the kennel up on the <laughs> counter. And Larry says, too bad about Wayne Newton. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Balky stops right there, turns around. Something happened to Wayne. <laughs> and and get, Larry says, aha. You get a great <laughs> aha from Larry. And Balky's like, call said, I don't know if I could do this. And Larry's like, no, you could do this. He puts him, he makes him sit down at one of the stools at the counter. He goes, all you have to do is focus your anger. And Balky's like, oh, I don't have any anger. And Larry's like, oh, yes, you do. And then they go back and forth. Right? They go, he goes, oh, I no, know. I don't. Yes, yes you, you do. do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Yes, I do. And then Balky suddenly grabs Larry's shirt, pulls him close. And he goes, I don't I have don't any anger. I don't have anger. any anger. <laughs> <laughs> and he realizes that he goes, oh, where do you think that come from? <laughs> and so, of course, Larry explains that that is the anger that Balky has for Mr. Gorpley. Um, because he promised you a raise and he didn't give it to you. Viciously took it away from you, he says. He viciously <laughs> took it away from you. And Balky is sort of like realizing, he says, well, I'll be snooker. There's a Balky. I didn't yeah. know that was in there. And then Larry sort of raises the stakes oh, yeah. here yeah. for Balky and this raise. Um, and he says, there's a lot more anger inside of you if you if you look for it. And he he explains to Balky that um, because Balky sends half of his paycheck home to his mama. Right. So he would have, if he had a raise, he would have sent half the raise home to mama. Yep. So by taking the money away from Balky, Mr. Gorpley is actually taking money away from Balky's <laughs> mama. From your mama. <laughs> And Balky says, what kind of a man would steal from a kindly old woman? Larry says, right, Larry, Larry says, says that, that, yeah. And Balky goes, a and, bad man. <laughs> <laughs> and and also in this exchange, Balky had explained that he sends money to her so she don't have to work so hard in her golden oh, years. Oh, he's taking, he's looking out for her. Well, Larry says, how does that make you feel? And first he says, awful. And Larry asks again, how does that make you feel? And Balky says, bad. And Larry asks again. How does that make you feel? And he's poking Balky yes, in the chest the now with every word. And Balky says, that makes me angry. And he picks Larry up and he like he like lifts him up and From holds his over armpits. his head. That's yeah, pretty like good. Like a child. That's, he's really strong. Like Marklin Baker has got away. Marklin Baker is tiny, okay, though. But still, you're lifting like a good, what, yeah. 120, 130 pounds yeah. right, right up in the air. It's pretty good. Uh, and we don't know. Maybe we didn't see the feet. Maybe he's standing on something. No, no, uh, maybe. But it looked like he just picked them up like <laughs> yeah. the Hulk. Like he's trying to activate the Hulk inside yeah. Bruce Banner. And that makes me angry. <laughs> Shit, he's holding him up in the air. And Larry says, good, good, good. Put me down. <laughs> uh, he puts Larry down. And Larry asks him what he's going to do with that anger. And Balky, of course, says, I'm going to use it to get what I want. And Larry says, and why are you going to get what you want? And Balky says, because I'm selfish. <laughs> and Larry says, why are you selfish? And Balky says, because I want to make people happy. Happy. And he's shaking Larry back and forth like a rag doll. He's grabbing him by the shirt, shaking him. And Larry's like, yes, yes, yes. You've got it. That's it. Now, this is a famous <laughs> scene in Perfect Strangers lore. Uh, the there was an accident while they were performing this scene stick around listener to the end of the recap we have a clip from good morning america bronson pincho in 1988 he's going to tell you what exactly what happens. happens in the scene and it's kind of crazy and it's a great story all right we'll come back yeah. to that stay with us to the end we're almost there so then we cut to um the next morning at the chronicle and balky is ready and charged ready to get his raise he's doing that confident chest out walk around like he's he's on a mission he's got a great vest on here too i don't know if it's one we've seen before or is think, this a new vest i think 
it is, but I don't remember what we called it or what uh, Belky Duds called it's it. It's one of his great bests, though. Yeah. And uh, he's super confident, yeah. and he announces to the room, all right, Mr. Gorbley, you can run, but you cannot ride. And he goes, he's up at the top <laughs> of the stairs, up, yeah. and he pushes both doors with both hands. He takes the stairs like two steps at a yeah. time. Of course, it's, you can run, but cannot hide is the saying, and yes. he changes it to ride. I thought he was going to say, you can run, but you cannot, cannot run. You cannot run, or walk, <laughs> maybe walk. Whatever, but buddy. you cannot walk. Oh, that's funny, too. <laughs> You can run, but you cannot yeah. walk. So anyways, he thinks Gorbley's upstairs. When uh, Every time we've seen Gorbley, he's come out of that back room. Yeah. I don't know why he's going upstairs. Uh, and then Larry goes to his desk, and he looks up, and he sees Doug Perkins. Oh, Doug Perkins. Coming. He comes out the stairs just as Balky goes in the door. Doug Perkins pops out. He makes it down the stairs, and this is so funny. Larry confronts him. He goes, stop. He goes, last week I asked holds you. He holds up his hand, of course. He goes, last week I asked you very nicely to move your car. You refused. I let you get away with it. Well, those days are over. I want you out of my space, and I want you out now. And he looks at Perkins, and Doug Perkins just goes, oh, man, you've been to the stop seminar, haven't you? <laughs> and Larry's like, well, y- yes, I have. Uh, and Doug says, uh, he went to that seminar last week. That's why I took your space. I thought it would make you happy. Then I spent the whole weekend telling my wife where to get off. She threw me out, just went upstairs, demanded a raise. I was fired. Stop ruined my life. Then he grabs Larry's jacket. He goes, do yourself a favor. Forget everything they told you before. It's too late. As he's this defeated Doug Perkins runs off to the garage. And if you remember, when we meet Doug, the first thing he says is stop right there. When Larry's yeah. trying to talk yeah, yeah. to him. Yeah. But um, I just think this is fascinating because the whole thing about it taking something you want will make other people happy. And now Larry just yeah, gets a taste of the other side of that. Very it's clearly. just kind of like woo woo talk. It's very yes. like w- what we hear. Um, like, you know, in modern day, it's like this culture of like life coaches and this uh, still influencers. Exists. Yeah. yeah. And they say things that sound right, but when you stop to think about them, you're like, like wait a minute. Well, I can't say this to people. <laughs> what are you talking? It's going to ruin my life. So Doug leaves, and now uh, Larry has just had an epiphany where he's like, oh, boy, Balky's oh boy. going for a raise, and now I'm going to, this is, I have to stop him. When he sees, first he runs up the stairs looking for Balky, and then Mr. Gorpley enters from the garage. He runs back down. He goes, Mr. Gorpley, Mr. Gorpley, uh, uh if you see Balky before <laughs> I do, you should know that uh, he was, uh, uh, he he was hypnotized at a party, and he thinks he's General Patton, which is the best thing he could think of <laughs> in the moment. I would have said like he has a a head injury and has a concussion. Yeah, yeah. And maybe he's saying yeah, hypnotized at a party is like very specific. It's a very specific <laughs> excuse. If you see Balky, I would have said like he's not feeling well. He's yes, not himself he's not himself. Today. He's running a high fever. Yeah. Don't listen to yeah. anything he says. Anyways, Gorpley's like, look, if this is some sob story about the Mepia Trey, save your breath. He says over the weekend. I thought about it, and I decided to give it to him. Oh, and everyone, there's no further explanation no, here about so does, what softened does up. Does Gorbley have a heart? Maybe somebody, maybe somebody complained to HR. Oh, maybe somebody heard him going. He's saying comments. things about him being foreigners. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't want to get in trouble again. That's a good point. And he's like, maybe, maybe. I should give it to him. <laughs> uh, so Gorbley leaves, and Larry, and then suddenly Balky. He comes back out those doors, throws them open at the top of the stairs. And we have some very funny physical comedy on the stairs. So Balky's at the top coming down and Larry's going up the stairs to meet him. And he's super he's like, Balky, Balky, hey, listen, buddy, <laughs> listen, Balky, 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 change a plan. <laughs> but every time he reaches Balky, Balky just like shoves him aside <laughs> aggressively. And he goes sort of like spinning off over the banister. Balky's like uh, the assertiveness terminator. In this point, yeah, like yeah, he's basically. just shoving he's everything just aside. Like one, he's got shoving everything. Got one mission, one directive, prime directive. And then Larry tries again. He comes back. He approaches him as Balky's still coming downstairs. He's like, "You got your raise." And Balky goes, "Of course I did," and pushes him aside <laughs> again. And he's like, and then Larry comes back around to him. He's like, "Balky, you can't do this." And then Balky goes, out of my way, little man. And he pushes him aside again. I have a date with Dynasty. This is a great <laughs> line. A great when Balky is a mess up. Of course, the phrase is date, date with, with Destiny. Destiny. Also, and what was Dynasty, Dynasty in 1980? very popular soap drama. I, yes, I think it was on ABC. Uh, was it daytime or evening? No, it was evening. It was a nighttime, primetime 
Yeah. Dynasty. I remember the our mom watched the rents it. used to watch Dynasty. Yeah. Yes. I don't remember Alexis, any of the stuff. Alexis right. Carrington, the Carrington yeah, yeah. family. It was about a rich snooty. Second only family. to Dallas. The show was like yeah. that big after Dallas. So I remember Dynasty. So, so that would have been on TV in, in the 80s. Absolutely. So, so he makes I have two a date things. with Dynasty. Dynasty. <laughs> and he shoves him aside again. And Larry's now we have frantic, panicky Larry, the one we know and love. Balky, Balky, you have got to stop, stop. <laughs> and Balky says, if you, cousin, if you don't want to make the trip to success, then get out of the road. <laughs> and then he like turns Larry around. They're, they're on the floor now yeah. off the stairs and shoves him into a mail cart. Yes. And like Larry just goes head first and like tumbles into this mail cart. And then Balky turns the mail cart, which is on wheels. And like pushes it across <laughs> off the basement screen, yes. off screen. And Larry's legs and are dangling hear, out of the top of it. And we hear a crash sound. <laughs> <laughs> so Balky has sent Larry careening across the mailroom in a mail cart <laughs> as just then Gorpley comes out of his office. He has a piece of paper in his hand. He's like, oh, Bartogamus. And before he could even start saying anything, Balky goes, stop. And I'm like, oh, with shut. his hand He's in Bartok's and, and, and Gorbley's face, and I'm like, oh, shut up, Palky, shut up, stop. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't do this. And Gorbley's just like, excuse me. And Palky goes, nobody takes money out of my mama's mouth. He says, mouth. mouth. And Gorbley's like, what are you talking about? And he goes, I'm talking about my mama's mouth and the act of taking money out of it. I love that. That's M, a weird. But line. The, the M alliteration is great. It is a weird line. And then he goes, I deserve a raise. Therefore, it's mine. I demand it now. Oh, boy. And Gorpley's like, has he lost his mind? Yeah. Um, Gorpley actually goes, he gives a, let me get this straight, which he says, which is the balky line. <laughs> yes. And he says, you're demanding a raise. And Balky goes, you got that right, you meepiat mother mugger. Oh, my God. Meepiat mother Ooh, mugger is that's great. That's skirting. It yeah. all sounds like an actual swear. Meepiat mother mugger. <laughs> it's so good. More M's, too. And then Gorpley, still holding this piece of paper in his hand, asks Balky if he knows what's on this piece of paper. Or no, he says, do you know what this is? And Balky says, it's a piece of paper. <laughs> <laughs> he's like it's not just any piece of paper this is the authorization for your raise and he was just taking it up to payroll to which Balky says well of course you were don't be ridiculous but he says that right away yeah. then he realizes then he snaps out of it then he goes I got yeah. my raise all like innocently like normal and then was like well you had it and then he rips up oh, the authorization ouch. right in front of him and throws it on the ground crumples it up and he's like, now you don't. Oh, <laughs> my God. And he goes back to his oh, office. Oh, rough. <laughs> uh, and then Bal Balky reaches down. He's, he's in shock. He's picked up the piece of paper. He's walking back to his mail desk. When you see <laughs> Larry kind of paddle back over, he has a coat rack. He's still he's in like the mail cart. He's with a coat <laughs> rack on the floor. Back. He goes, Balky, what happened? And Balky just staring at him with dagger eyes. And he goes, Balky, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm focusing my anger. <laughs> At that point, Larry tries to paddle away, and Balky that... just puts one hand on the cart. Yeah, uh, holding And it it's there. not going anywhere. It's super funny. I love <laughs> when he just rose back into the sea. Yeah, it's oh, so man. funny. That I did was not so... expect that. I, I so imagine good. that was like improvised yeah, or like, that was something what Mark if i just Baker. do this just give me that yeah, coat rack it was so funny like you didn't think he would have gotten out of the thing by now yeah, <laughs> but but he, he just grabbed a great. coat rack and wrote himself back <laughs> all right so then we uh, cut to the next scene and it's in the apartment later that evening and balky uh runs through the front door and he's very very happy he um jumps over the couch uh, and he goes to where Larry is in the kitchen. He sa and he says, great news. Gorpley gave him his raise oh, back. Oh, good. Oh, thank Woo. goodness. <laughs> Although we know no backstory about how that uh, Yeah. Well, he kind of says, that's great. And he, Larry's like, I'm afraid I owe you a big apology. And I hope Mr. Gorpley wasn't too hard on you. And then we find out how um, Balky yeah, gets his raise. Right. There is a backstory. He goes, actually, all I had to do was tell him I've been listening to you. And that seemed to be enough. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Gorbley doesn't know who to hate more. I Larry know, Larry or Balky. Or Balky hates uh, he just doesn't respect anyone. Uh, and then they both go over. They're sitting at the counter in the kitchen. Cue lesson, lesson time, time music. music. Yeah. 
Larry realizes how gullible and foolish he was. He says, I don't know how I bought into all that stop business. I just want to be able to stand up for myself so that people won't walk all over. Yeah, that's fair. I just thought a little aggressiveness would help. And Balky says, it's okay to stand up for yourself as long as you don't stand on other people. <laughs> and then, this is a funny line. He says, you know, on Mepos, we have a saying. And then he pauses. He's like, would you care to hear it in the original? <laughs> and Larry's like, no, no, a translation would this be This is fine. like the so third the- Mepos uh, saying thing in the episode. Yeah, the Meep- Meepiots have a lot to say they about being a- aggressive. They want- and being nice, yeah. And being nice. Uh, so he, we, we forego the original uh, Miposian version of this saying, and we get the translation. It says, you get more flies with honey than with a rifle. <laughs> that is a, another a mashed up uh, thing. What is the saying? You get it's more like, funny. You get more flies with honey than with vinegar is the oh, saying. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. Meaning it's like kind of like a kill them with kindness. Kind right. Of. Yeah. Meaning you get, you know, be nice to people will get you farther. Uh, and Larry's like, I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> so the lesson is it's okay. Well, no, then Balky says it's okay as long as you learned a lesson. This is a very blatant lesson time. <laughs> and Larry says, oh, Balky, I have. And never again will I jump into something like this blindly. That's the lesson? He, uh, well, the good news yeah. is that we've taken care of the harm that's been done. Wait a minute. Pause here. Yeah. The lesson is that he's not going to fall for these scams. I thought the lesson is you get more flies with honey than with a to rifle. To be nice to people. Yeah. yeah. That's a mixed lesson. That's a mix. But Larry is just like, okay, I won't be so stupid. Well, and then I love how they set up the last joke where he's yeah. like, the good news is we've taken care of all the harm that's been done. Have you, Larry? There's still one, one hanging, dangling thread. There is a knock on the door for the third time in this episode. Balky and Larry both call, come in, and it's Jennifer. And Larry gets up to go meet her halfway, and he says, oh, Jennifer. And before he can say anything more, Jennifer says, I've been thinking about the way you treated me the other night. And Larry starts to explain, yes, about that. I And then Jennifer punches him hard in the, in the stomach, in the gut. In the she gut. wins him. Yeah. <laughs> She punches him. She punches her boyfriend in the stomach. She says, "Don't ever talk to me that way again." Okay, so she wasn't. She, she wasn't impressed. Uh, no, 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 she was she clearly thought about the it. Other She's way. smarter. Yes, than these guys. And Blair can't speak now. He's like, oh, oh. <laughs> like she got him. <laughs> she got the wind out of him. Yeah, he's totally winded. He's keeled over. She leaves, and Balky goes over to comfort Larry. He says, cousin, it was a sucker punch. You'll get her next time. (laughs) Trying to make him feel better. (laughs) And roll credits. Listener, before we get to our comments and your comments on this episode, visit our Tee Public shop. We have a merch shop where you can get great niche podcast swag. Danceofjoypod.com slash shop will get you there or there's a link in the show notes where you can get T-shirt, a hoodie, something to keep you warm with our logo, a coffee mug, a pillow, a laptop case. Lots of crazy things. Lots of fun stuff. All with the Dance of Joy logo. Do it now. Do it. Stop. Stop. Go over to our website and buy some (laughs) merch. Do it now. Does that work? I don't think. Please. Does this assertive? (laughs) Listen, let's just start with assertiveness training because it was a very popular thing back then. And it's still kind of like you kind of mentioned it still kind of uh, is a thing that happens today, um, but I just think it was I, that they picked up on this trend in the 80s and 90s of the seminars. You had to go to like a hotel yeah, banquet on a room. Weekend, yeah. These seminars were everywhere, and I think it broke up a lot of marriages, got a lot of people fired. Yeah. And I think I just noticed something interesting. In this lesson time scene, when Larry's talking, he doesn't say assertiveness. He said, I just thought a little aggressiveness, aggressiveness. would help. And I think there's a difference between assertiveness, aggressiveness, even now. I don't know about the 80s, but now it's not considered a a, a positive trait. It's like, you know, when women stand up and speak for themselves, they're labeled aggressive. Right. uh, And and it's considered a negative thing. Yeah. But he said, I just thought a little aggressiveness would help. And that's different than assertiveness. I mean, you know, it's interesting how these adjectives have kind of changed meaning. But every I mean, I do think he does. Need a little bit of assertiveness, a little backbone. Yeah. Everyone can use that. It's hard. Again, like we talked, I relate. 
to Valky about not asking for a raise and just like, you know, be, be, being uh, a little, uh, hard with the conversation. So that's all right. I'll never make a lot of money. You know, never get what it's just Dude, fun. You have to just ask for it. Yeah, but I just feel weird asking for it. It doesn't. Yeah, you're right. Everybody's right. It doesn't work like that. Real life doesn't work that way. It's hard to value. You got to value you yourself. Or you could just catch your boss calling you a foreigner and blackmail him. Yes. That next time that <laughs> happens, I'm recording it. Uh, and then finally, let's get to a story from yeah, Bronson let's Pinchot. This, let's hear about this accident. Uh, this is okay to set this up. This is an interview on Good Morning America, and I'm going to cut to right to the story is. But before that happens in the video. Uh, Bronson has grabbed the high heel so shoe. Weird. Yeah. Off the, I forget. Who is that? Is that like Savannah Guthrie or something? I forget. Who I that don't is. know who that was, but the interviewer, the woman, the, the woman the interviewer, host he, of her Good legs morning. are crossed in front of him and he just grabs her high heel and climb pump shoe and just off her holds, foot and the holds shoe it and cradles the it. whole time. He does give her interview. his shoe in exchange so she can hold it. In his defense. He does? Yeah, he oh, does right after that. And then okay. and then he gets to, it was very strange. He's just trying to be funny, you know? Yeah. But here's the story of uh, the accident. More comfortable. <laughs> you guys hit heads. Yeah, now that <laughs> scene really, goes on. really, got hurt, yeah. I'm told. That scene was about, a thing. he took one of those seminars where they brainwash you and tell you how to use your anger to become a more assertive person. Right. And he comes home and does it on me. And right before we shot it, you didn't see, in this clip, it didn't go far enough. Um, but right before we shot the scene, the, the producer writers said, you know what would be cute, Bronson? At the end of it, grab him and shake him like a rat. And, and Mark and I said, uh, well, we don't have time to rehearse it, but we'll, we'll just work it out. So we got in front of the cameras, and there's an audience of 415 people. And I, I got angry. You know, I did get angry. And I remember, I was shaking him like this, and his head. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. And why are you selfish? Because I want to make people Happy! Yes, yes, happy! You got it! <laughs> all right, so oh. anyway, all right, but that, that they, they fudged around it with the yeah, cutting. What happened was, I was shaking him, his head smashed into my mouth, and we, we looked at each other for a second. He had, like, blood streaming down his head. I had blood streaming out of my mouth, and he, like, just went, oh, and fell down, <laughs> and I, like, looked at the audience for a second and was like, how am I going to save this moment, and went, oh, on top of him, and everybody came rushing in, and he had this, and so, so they thought, all right, we don't want the audience to see this, so they staunched our blood, and my mouth was going to, like, come apart. Anyway, my tooth was back into my head, and my head was like, ah! <laughs> and he was like this, so they just, they, I mean, they just staunched the blood, and we finished the show, and I couldn't talk because my tongue, every time it flicked against my tooth, I saw stars, oh. so suddenly I had this lisp, because, I mean, you know. You even, were very lucky, I mean, you could have lost a tooth. Well, yeah, they wired the tooth, and, it, and it, I, they saved it, and they, they did all this stuff to it, and it's fine now, even though I still, you know, have a problem, but uh, part of his brain died, so unfortunately, I have to carry him <laughs> through the show, you know. <laughs> no, but he did, he, we went... The thing is, we finished the show, and then they and then they took us to the emergency room. And we were both sitting there like this, like with you know, and people kept pulling over the curtains and going, "Oh, hi, could I have an autograph?" <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys get hazardous duty pay or something? I mean, because this is you guys hurt your. You say you're black and blue all the time. That's so. That's a crazy that's story. Crazy. Oh my god. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, that they just went on and kept filming. They the rest did of the, the rest show. of the show. Consummate performers. These guys are crazy. They will bleed. Yeah. They literally will bleed for the uh, the their laughs. It's great. Okay, let's get to listener comments. Let's we got to bunch. listener comments. Find out what what other people think about assertiveness uh, and aggressiveness. So first we have cousin uh, Mariah Khalaf. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She writes, I was pretty shocked when I found out that Bronson and Mark injured each other while filming this episode. Also, the way Larry talked to Jennifer after he went to the stop <laughs> seminar, my mother would never tolerate <laughs> that if somebody talked to yeah. her that way. It's that flying. That's not going to fly. Cousin Lauren says, ah, yes, the injury episode. Can't say these two didn't throw themselves into their work. <laughs> Good pun. Uh, the whole backstory of this episode I actually find more interesting than the episode itself. The dueling eye movements during the commercial is great. Bronson Pinchot blinking at Mark Baker, then MLB giving an up and down look. Yeah, that's hilarious facial uh, expressions always. Stop. <laughs> Stop. And cousin John Adam writes the the guitar picture has been replaced with a very colorful. Something. Yeah, this is the uh, the art that's above like the stereo next to the bookshelf. 
Uh, it's different now, and I think they probably just smashed that last thing in the last episode where they turned yeah, the apartment Yeah, the last episode over. they tore they up broke the whole everything. apartment, so yeah. it's probably new everything. And then John, Cousin John also writes, an okay episode with some very funny bits. I'm never a fan of episodes of any sitcom where a character has a massive personality shift. Mm. It always feels rushed and forced. At least Perfect Strangers gives an actual reason for Larry's descent into madness. It's unfortunately a relevant episode even today in our yeah. emotionally maturing culture. Yeah. Very, yeah. Very astute observation it kind of is. No, and we were, we were talking earlier about like, it's a very, the plot wise, it's a very straightforward plot. I think the plot is plot. very straightforward. It's There's like boom, boom, an boom, A storyline yeah. and like half of a B storyline with Balky and the Rays, but it's all kind of connected to the same storyline. Um, and it's not very. The story is not very deep. It's just very, um, it's very surface and straightforward. And I mean, Larry does go from not being assertive to being too assertive to, I assume, not being assertive anymore. Yeah, At the yeah. End, and it all happens very quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. Cousin Pam says once again, Larry, Larry mansplaining women to Balky in the most sexist of ways. And then she writes, what is that pink thing on the counter? Some type of toy with a speaker? Why is it there? Cousin Evelyn and I are at the end of our soaps, soaps on, a on a rope trying to crack this case. I will put a screenshot I took of this in the But if you want to notes. see it, it's, it's in the scene where Larry comes back to the apartment just after the stop training. Right. And they're talking at the counter and there's like a weird pink... It's, object. it's like a toy. It looks like you see the back of it. It looks like there's a speaker. You, it looks like a pencil sharpener. You don't really get to see the <laughs> other side. And Cousin Evelyn and Pam, the rest of the thread, they're, they're stumped. They were trying to no idea guess, like, is. did he, did Bronson Pinchot get a toy from, like, one of his nieces or something? And, like, oh, I'll put this. This will be my signal. I'll yeah, put this in the maybe. scene. Uh, maybe what is that? It's so weird. And they're just sitting there. It's, like, kind of obvious. It's not uh, that there's just a weird pink thing. So, or maybe there was like something that was cut out of the show where he was doing something with that uh, before Larry. Oh, possibly, called. possibly. Yeah, but who knows? It's a very weird good, object. Good comments from the listener. We did get one. Don't be ridiculous. Of course, I have. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Always good to see that. And no Dimitri appearance. We get a Dimitri mention while he's helping him. Yeah, like get a, to the a suggestion yeah. of Dimitri there. You, but we yeah. don't actually see Dimitri. But lucky for us, we have our friend Dimitri Sheep on Instagram. It's an Instagram account called Dimitri Sheep, all one word. Uh, that is joining us on this journey through the Perfect Stranger seasons with an with a themed um, Instagram post for each episode. So let's take a look at this episode's post. Uh, the the post is uh, the comment with the post just as assertive training, and the location is assertive risk management <laughs> solutions. Oh, old arms. The old yes. arms uh, company, arms. yes, Alternative <laughs> Risk Management Solutions. And this one is very clever because we see in the picture it's Dimitri Sheep, and in front of Dimitri Sheep are three um, like decorative pomegranates. The pomegranate, yes. I don't know what Ooh, the wait. things off to the side are. Yeah, They're there's like little ceramic wall hanging decorations. Things. One's polka dot. Maybe more. One's got swirly. Maybe more pomegranates. But for the wall. Oh, they're um, wall palm flattened yeah, out wall, wall palm pomegranates. There you go. Yeah. We got wall palms. We got table palms. And then Dimitri Sheep has a bandage around his head and a bandage over his mouth that says "ouch," which represents the injuries. The did well. They, we just heard about that that's they so sustained clever. in this show. Yeah. Both injuries on the same Dimitri Sheep. Very, very clever. Well done. We love every Dimitri Sheep post. Uh, thus far, so please go on over to Instagram and follow, like, and follow Dimitri Sheep. There will be a link in the show notes to Dimitri Sheep's post every episode. And now we are at the segment of our show that we call Perfect Strangers Today or PS Today, which is when we consider how things would be different if this story, this episode, were made today in 2022. So there's like uh, quite a few things to talk about. First of all, <laughs> Gorpley would be canceled. Oh, fired for, so fired. F for that line about yeah. Balky being an immigrant dressing funny and he doesn't like him. That's not okay anymore. I mean, there's many ways Balky could have just like got him, get him to lose his job. He's just got to tell somebody. 
You know also, all said. it would take is one person uh, live streaming or videoing that and then blasting him, getting that comment on video. Oh, my God. Can you imagine if, like, Larry is like, oh, my God, he's getting his raise. I'm going to I'm going to video yeah, his reaction. Yeah, yeah. No, but nobody would get caught even saying things like that. Yeah. Uh, anymore. People, nobody like and writers wouldn't even write that. No, into they wouldn't show. even think that you could write something so like that. I was kind of interested in thinking about like what the writers were thinking. So that's progress. I wrote that. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And then um, I also thought that instead of an infomercial, which were big in the 80s, like what we have now, again, like a lot of our PS Today stuff falls on social media and smartphones. But what we have now are influencers. Right. And like uh, uh like marketing schemes life and life coaches yeah. and like all these are all the people who say these woo woo things they say the same things you can do it you can get wellness what you want fads. wellness fads yeah. wellness like coaches wellness yeah. coaches like you just have to be assertive you just have to be aggressive but then you know i don't know and you would see an ad for this on your instagram feed or facebook just having talked about it yeah. and it wouldn't be an in person yeah. seminar now it would be like a zoom seminar be a zoom seminar you got to pay for yeah. it and uh, be a sucker, like all these or just like a series of videos. To yes. Watch. Oh, it would be a video <laughs> course on Skillshare yeah. how you to Demi. be assertive <laughs> in ten easy steps. Also, I know it would cost a lot of money. It would cost like it would be like three thousand dollars. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Would, and I don't think you're getting a jacket with this one. You maybe get a sticker. Uh, yeah. And also, maybe when Larry saw that somebody had parked in the spot. You could uh you could dox the guy on Twitter. Oh and yeah, just total post sweet photo. shaming. Be like, like, look at this guy this parking guy? in my spot. Passive aggressive, make life real hard for Doug Perkins on the social medias, maybe. Yeah, so a lot of social media related updates, but um, I think the episode could still be made the, to yeah, work. The basic uh, plot and the idea is that, that, like John said, is still, unfortunately, it's kind of relative. Still true. Yeah, you it's have kind of to relevant. ask for your raises. You can't, you have to send the food. You are, so I, I, relate to it not in terms of a raise but in terms of getting the wrong food i'm always the person who's like well i'll just eat it yeah i did like, this isn't I did what i ordered thing, but, like, eh, that's fine. but it Whatever. took a lot of friends of mine saying Why like no that? this is a business right. you're paying right. for it right. you're exchanging right. money for right. a service this is not what you ordered and they're in the business of bringing you what you ordered if this isn't it you should say like so, be polite yes. about it no, but you should I say mean, something th that's a very good point but it goes back to like people still have an issue being the right level of assertiveness. Like, you got to pick your battles. Like, is this... Because you could go too far, and right. that's is what this we really call worth it? Karen these days. Yes, is that, yeah, where she, she would live stream the thing and start and, crying and... and complain and turn, to the manager. Then but... just go, grow fetal on the floor in a ball and sob. <laughs> but on the surface level, like... It's true. If you're in a restaurant, you don't get what you ordered, or you don't it, like what you ordered. It is a business. Even. You don't like your product, you got to say something. How are they going to know? Right. You're Just entitled. like the raise. How are they going to know that you want a raise if you don't ask exactly. for the raise? Exactly. Ugh. So I've been, it's something, yeah. it's, a, it's a lifetime of, uh, I'm still in between of learning these yeah. things. Yeah. yeah. I'm probably way that too old to still, still be in the process. Completely but. holds up today. Interesting. Yeah. Enough. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's good. That's it for this episode. Don't forget, join us, say subscribe next week. Um, there's aliens. That's what's happening. Aliens. There might be somebody who thinks everybody is aliens. Uh, a little sci-fi horror vibe. Wait. Oh, should be interesting. Perfect strangers getting interesting. In the meantime, listeners, if you are still with us, please get in touch. Let us know who you are, what you love about Perfect Strangers, what you love about our podcast, Dance of Joy. And uh, if you feel so inclined, please feel free to support the show. You can go to Dance of Joy danceofjoypod.com slash support and you can buy us a coffee, a virtual coffee. Every little bit helps us keep this show going and providing um, a little platform for for our little love of perfect strangers. Send us your spare dig does so we can help the <laughs> Mipos GDP increase. Yes. And we'd cut down we, their... We'll send half of it home to we'll Mama. We'll send half of it home to Mama and the other half goes to their national debt of $637. <laughs> Uh, you can also find uh, our Apple podcast uh, and Spotify links where you can leave reviews and ratings on both those platforms, or you can send us a voice message. There's a little microphone on the bottom, uh, and you can do your best Balky impersonation, or just ask us a question, and you can hear yourself on the show. Yes, it's all right there at danceofjoypod.com. And the most important thing, sister, <laughs> I'm sorry, making you do it this time. The most important thing is to stop <laughs> and be 
assertive. No, be nice. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. The most important thing is to catch flies with honey and not with a rope. <laughs> the most important thing, listener, share this show with a perfect stranger's friend. Turn them on to the show. There's a link to the IMDb page in our show notes and everything else you can share. Text this episode to them. Share them the link. Uh, do it now. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Share the show. Thanks for listening this week. And now we are so happy. Now we are so happy. We do the dance of joy. <laughs> hey, 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 hey.